Frankie. <laughs> guys and girls, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. This is Frankie. I love Frankie. <laughs> Frankie's one of my favorite guitars, has been since February. Now, it's a beautiful July summer day today, and it is stunning out there. It's really nice and warm, and I even have my shorts on. Yeah, <laughs> but I built this back in February, like I said, um, and you know what? There have been some delays in me finishing off this video, <laughs> some procrastination, but also, you know, I built this in the meantime. This is my custom 50 watt Plexi JP69. Uh, it's a 69 Plexi lead and um, it has some very, very nifty EVH mods on it as well. So I wanted to kind of um, build this first and I kind of got figuring, you know what, if I'm going to be showing you Frankie, then I need to play Frankie through a Plexi, which is EVH inspired. Anyways, Here's the full build which happened in February of this year. Enjoy watching it. Howdy guys! Guess what I'm up to today? <laughs> You've already seen the title. You've seen the thumbnail. You know what I'm going to be doing today. It is time to build a Frankenstrat. Now, check it out. Ooh. I'm going to give you some close-ups of this because <laughs> this is just freaking beautiful. Um, this is something that um, I basically chanced upon before Christmas. I was um, on um, eBay just browsing as you do, uh, typed in um, Van Halen guitar and uh, this showed up. And I was looking at the pictures and literally I was getting goosebumps. I was reading the spec and asked a few questions about it as well because um, I wanted to make sure that this is what I thought it was, which is actually a, a custom built Frankenstrap body. And um, the answers came back and I basically just purchased it <laughs> because it is so, so well done. Whoever did the work on this body really took their time over it. Um, the details are just exquisite. I mean, you know, I'll give you close-ups, but this is a heavy piece of uh, swamp ash. You know, you can see the grain of the wood through the um, paint there. And just the way everything's been done and aged and stuff, there's actually a volume knob just under the um, plate here. Um, it's been aged. The, um, uh, the jack plate's been aged. You know, holes in the right place extra hole where you don't expect them to be and stuff like that because they're on the original <laughs> these are real reflectors you know uh, just awesome whoever did this put a lot a lot of love into it and um, yeah um, I've been wanting one of these for a long time so it came like this and uh, I just had to snap it up because it is so 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 awesome and I'm so glad I did because this is absolutely perfectly done um, in terms of like you know a copy of the original and it's been relicked really beautifully as well so got that got the neck as well now the neck I did a little bit of work to uh, this is an all parts neck and um, it's a licensed fender neck um, and basically I had slimmed it down a little bit and I rolled the edges and I was going to show you the aging process. I'd had this whole plan to show you the aging process. And as I was basically kind of like just um, cleaning up the frets with some um, wet dry paper, uh, the dust from the wet dry paper actually got onto the frets there and it discolored them. So I basically just made a pattern out of it. And it did a perfect job. <laughs> now this isn't the full aging. There is one more step which I want to take. And you might be able to see up here that um, I've managed to get this looking a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And it's basically going to be, I'm going to take this for a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm going to use tea bags to do that. And that's how I did this basically. Just a little bit of subtle color. And I think this will be beautiful. 
There is one more thing that I'm going to do, or two more things actually. I'm um, going to give this a little bit of spirit dance treatment. Yeah, I think I'm going to put a gradient on here, um, just a little bit of a burning, because I want to personalize this guitar. And, um, you know, this is uh, going to be my version of Frankie rather than um, Eddie's version of Frankie. So uh, I'll put some of my touches. Uh, the work on the neck um, worked out beautifully because it feels so, so awesome. It, it feels really, really good. Um, it's 20.5mm uh, all the way along um, from uh, the 12th, 13th fret all the way down to the 1st fret. Yeah, the edges have been rolled beautifully, uh, no sharp edges on the frets or anything like that. Stunning! And I even um, routed a Floyd shelf here. It's the first Floyd shelf I've actually routed. This was like, you know, just a regular neck with a regular nut on it. Now, there are um, one or two things which I'm going to do to the body to personalize it as well. And this is something, um, it was a dilemma whether or not to do it. Uh, most of it's going to stay the same, but the heel on this is a regular kind of big square heel, which is like the original. But I was speaking to a friend of mine, uh, my friend Eamon, um, Eamon Weiss, and he said, you know what, the whole ethos of kind of creating a Frankenstrat is to personalize it. And he was right, because what I was contemplating doing was actually shaving this down and making it an all access so that it's not just a block heel. And I'm going to do that. Once I do that, I'm going to repaint it because I like this design and uh, then scuff it up a little bit at the edges. Uh, but this will be profiled down so that it's easier to access the higher frets. The other thing that I'm going to do is put neck ferrules in there. So rather than it being a big plate, uh, there'll be neck ferrules. I'm going to leave this hole, I'm not going to fill it because I believe that Eddie would have left it. <laughs> if he shaved this down, he would have left it. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, repaint this a little bit and then kind of scuff it up, leave that there so that it looks relic and um, then have the uh, ferrules, the neck ferrules and um, screws rather than a plate. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this to the workshop in a second and get going with that. Shouldn't take too long to do that. The other thing that I have for it is this absolutely beautiful Floyd by Schaller. Yeah, this is a really nice unit. Um, one of the reasons I went for this one was because it's in um, a nickel finish. So it's already kind of looking a little bit pre-aged and it'll age really nicely with time as well. The Floyd Royals units, uh, I think you can get like a, a black satin or um, a black nickel or something like that. Um, but it would have taken quite a while for it to reach me. So, um, you know, one of my suppliers actually sells these. Uh, same unit is, you know, um, the, the uh, plate is actually, uh, I think it's made out of billet. You know, it's a really, really well-made plate. Um, so pretty much exactly the same as the Floyd Rose, but just say it's shallow on the top. I don't mind that. Personalizing. <laughs> and of course, because it is a um, an EVH guitar, there has to be a D-tuner in it. And rather than going for the EVH D-Tuner, I found this. This is by a company called Tonevice. Yeah, you guys might have um, heard about these guys. Anyways, this is such an elegant solution. It is tiny and basically this just spins round and uh, gives the D-Tuning or um, tunes it up to uh, standard. So um, I went for this one. Again, you know, just a little bit of personal touch and I get the detuner in there as well. Alrighty, so first thing I'm going to do is get the body into my workshop and shave down that neck joint and then it will be ready for me to actually drill the holes um, for the neck and uh, then attach the neck as well. Ain't going to take me long. This is going to be so much fun to do. And along the way, I'll show you which pickup I'm going to put in there. Once I've done all the work, I think I'm going to have to play a Van Halen thing. What do you reckon? <laughs> Let's get going with it. Yeah! Alright, I have the body down on the bench here and um, I'm just going to be using this orbital sander to uh, basically take it down to the level that I want and then what I'm going to do is smooth it off a little bit then repaint this. I like these lines. So I'm going to repaint this and then scuff it up a little bit again after it's repainted. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I'm wearing a full respirator mask while I'm doing this. Um, I like to wear these because I don't like the dust from all the wooden paint to get into my nose and um, lungs and stuff. So, 
Safety first. If you're enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be bringing you more builds of guitars and amplifiers really, really soon. And please do hit the bell notification as well and give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a great deal as a contents creator and allows me to carry on making super cool videos like this just for you guys. Thanks so much. Alrighty, that's all done. And it's feeling really, really good. I'm just gonna um, use some um, finer grit sandpaper just to smooth this off a little bit. But you know what? I actually like the way this looks. It looks very DIY. <laughs> I think I should leave it like this. I can always paint it at a later date, but um, I think I'm gonna leave it like this for the time being and just make this a little bit dirty. I'll scuff this up or something just to make it look a little bit aged and stuff. But I think. That looks super cool on here. <laughs> Yay! Personalized it. Alrighty, now I've got to drill a hole in a different place for the uh, fourth screw and then just countersink these for the ferrules as well. Alrighty, so how I'm going to age this is I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, wet and dry paper and uh, I've got this uh, spring which is very very um, rusted up <laughs> so I'm actually going to just rub the spring first and get some of the rust onto the paper and then basically rub the paper onto here and basically what it's doing is it's actually transferring that rust color over to here and um, it's basically just aging it a little bit there I've got a couple of other tricks which I'm going to use as well. Alright, so that's gone from a really pale colour to like my uh, golden colour, a little bit of golden colour. I'm just going to get my metal rule here and I'm going to scrape some of the, um, the dust off here. And just rub it in. And this is going to start going into the grain. And again, it just starts to age it. it. Makes it look older than, you know, just freshly sanded wood. There you go. And then what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of dirt and kind of just rub that in as well. Oh yeah, that did a great job there. Anything that's going to get it looking aged. This is basically just sawdust off the floor and um, it's probably just got some water in it or something <laughs> oh that looks great <laughs> that looks really cool let me show you what it looks like now i think there's one other thing that i'm gonna do just to kind of give it a little bit of a jp touch blowtorch <laughs> why not let's do it let's do a little bit There you go, just that much. 
That looks so great. <laughs> I'm totally cool with that. I'm totally happy with that. It doesn't need anything more, I don't think. I'm not going to paint it. I think it looks great like this. It's a little nod to Spirit Dance guitars and um, also what I do um, in general with my guitars, which is bug torture. <laughs> Alrighty, now onto the neck. Like I said, I'm just going to um, get the, uh, the neck and just put a little bit of a burning gradient on the head there. Um, I think that'll look really, really cool and personalize it. And I'll match up with that. Yeah. And there you go. A little nod to Spirit Dance guitars there as well. I like that. I like that a lot. I think I should take this for afternoon tea. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, last thing to do on the body is to drill a new hole for the screw. And I've got my drill bit ready here. I'm using a, a tungsten carbide bit which is very, very sharp so it'll uh, go through the wood nicely. Um, the other thing that I have done is on the other side I've put some um, masking tape, some really good masking tape so that it doesn't splinter when it comes through. Alright, now that's done, um, the only other thing that I need to do is do the countersinks for the, uh, the ferrules. Um, I have this bit which is the same diameter, this is a really good um, drill bit which I found, um, which uh, allows me to do this to the exact diameter. Beautiful, all done. All right, the body mods are done. This neck joint is looking so cool. It feels great as well. <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun to play. And um, these are countersunk into the body as well, which is perfect. So um, it's pretty much ready to uh, be mated to the neck. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, just fit the neck uh, drill the holes for the uh, the screws and uh, I'm going to be ready to uh, construct this really really soon and the postman just came which means the pickup is here yay so I'll show you what that is in a second there's one more mod that I'm going to do now in here we do have a quarter now I think I think this quarter is from 1977. Somebody has crashed out the last number in there. Um, I don't have a 71, I actually have a 72, um, uh, which I just had from previous trips to the USA. I also have a 73. Now I'm gonna put a 73 on here. I'm gonna basically get my 73 and put the holes in there and put it on here. Why? Well, I was born in 1973, so it'll kind of personalize the guitar for me. Yeah. 
Alrighty, I went ahead and um, drilled the holes for the screws as well. This neck fits really, really beautifully and tight onto that body. It's just such a snug fit. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so I went ahead and drilled these. Um, now this uh, screw here needs to be shorter and I was actually going to cut one of these screws down, um, one of the um, chrome screws. Then I thought, yeah, let's keep it DIY. I have other screws which are shorter, so I'm going to put an odd screw in there just to give it the DIY look. I have some shorter screws which I actually use specifically for this purpose when I cut down um, neck joints. So um, I'm going to use one of those and it's actually black in color, which will look great on the back because again, it'll just feed into that whole DIY thing. Alrighty, uh, this is all pretty much done now. So the mods to the body are done and there's the neck joint. The uh, stuff that I wanted to do to the neck is done. Um, the holes are drilled into the neck as well. Um, so it's ready to be bolted on. And then I'm gonna basically just uh, put tea on the wood. This is a uh, raw wood, so it'll um, soak in and just color it a little bit. Then um, I'm gonna do the coin, uh, get that one. I think that's pretty much all the work that I need to do and I just need to bolt it together. I'm super excited about this. Alrighty, it is um, tomorrow, as in the following day. <laughs> it is snowing like crazy down here, I'm going to show you. So how cool does this look? <laughs> this is the perfect day to be working on a guitar inside. And it's snowing like this outside. There's a workshop down there, yay! There. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully this won't settle, but if it does, I'm sure it'll look really cool. Check out that snowstorm. So the guitar neck, um, I was uh, going to do the cigarette burns on the um, headstock. I had to rethink about that because uh, of uh, three reasons. Firstly, I like how this looks. It's a, uh, you know, tip of the hat to Spirit Dance Guitars. Um, I can always add it later as well, which is the second reason. And the third reason is, I don't smoke. <laughs> so it doesn't really make sense for me to put it on there. I'd rather just personalize it like this and just leave it like this. Like I said, second reason is, I can always add it later, right? <laughs> it's um, not gonna make a big uh, difference if I don't put it on now. I can't take it away later, obviously, if, if it's burnt into there. So I'll live with this for, for a little while. So um, I'm going to get the tea bags and I'm going to uh, make this look a little bit older, give it some color. It's very, very, very pale at the moment. It's just the plain maple at the moment. So let's give this some color. Alrighty, you've got my tea bags here. I have two different kinds. I have an Assam and I have an Earl Grey in there. <laughs> two different colors. <laughs> Why not? Alrighty, so I've let them cool a little bit and um, I'm literally just going to rub them onto the wood, uh, front and back. The back I haven't done anything too, apart from this little bit. So it's just going to change the color a little bit as per how it looks down here. So uh, one of the things I'm going to do is try and avoid getting too much onto the frets themselves. I am going to clean the frets before I put the uh, neck onto the guitar anyway, but uh, let's see how I get on. Okay, so I'm literally just going to take the tea bag and just wipe it on. instantly kind of just makes things look very very cool <laughs> all right i'm gonna try the other one as well oh that's cool so this one um i don't know which one this is uh, but this one's a little bit lighter in color the other one is darker in color so i can probably use this one first of all and then switch over to this one and just put a little bit more on And then just blend the colors. So that it doesn't look so even right the way across. In fact, I'm gonna try dabbing it on and then dabbing the other one on.
And in fact, I like that effect much better. So we're getting a nice blend of tea. <laughs> now, one of the reasons this works really well is because the tannins in the tea react with the wood. So once I do this, I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours and then I'm going to um, do the neck again, but this time in um, a boiled linseed oil, just to seal it. This looks great. <laughs> there you go. There's the uh, front of the neck done. I'm going to do the, the back and the sides as well, and then I'll let it dry for a couple of hours. It just looks much older now, you know, as in kind of it's been aged by light and the sun hitting it and stuff like that. Beautiful. All right. This one's going to be even quicker because I can basically just wipe the tea all over. I don't have to avoid frets and things like that. I'm going to clean all of this stuff up <laughs> and let it dry for a couple of hours. So while the neck is drying, um, I can get on with them finishing the body. And I've already done one thing, which is to put my 1973 coin onto there. I drilled it this morning off camera. And that took literally 10 minutes to do. Looks awesome. Personalize it for me, yay! <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, need to get the uh, the jack in there and um, I'll take the plate off and get the uh, the knob from there. Probably wire up the, um, start wiring up the uh, pot as well. Um, obviously this isn't going to be used. <laughs> That's there for aesthetics. And I'll show you the pickups that um, I'm going to use on this as well. Or the pickup, I should say, because this one's already there. This dummy pickup is already there. It was already installed when I purchased the guitar, or the, the body, I should say. So the pickup that I opted for is by Pariah Pickups. And um, if I can one-handedly open this box, there you go. <laughs> it is this one here, which is the Pasadena Black. Yeah. So, um... Uh, you can go and uh, check out the pickups on the Pariah website. I'll leave a link in the description box. Uh, this one is actually a scary pickup, the Pariah Scary. So this one's going to go into one of my other guitars. Very much looking forward to trying that. But I'm super, super stoked about this pickup as well. And um, when I ordered it from Sean, um, I asked him to very much age it because it needed to uh, match the patina of this guitar, right? <laughs> I wanted it to look like it was from the uh, 1970s and he did such a beautiful job. Check it out. Check out the patina on that. It fits the, uh, the profile of the guitar so, so, so well. All right, so once I do that, I'm also going to uh, install the claw at the back and uh, get all of that stuff done. All of this is done. And uh, later today, once I have the, uh, the neck oiled and um, let it sit for a couple of hours after that, uh, this should be ready to put together. Super, super excited. On this build, I'm gonna use uh, Mad Hatter guitar pots and um, jack. Um, Electric Ed at Mad Hatter is a really good friend of mine and um, I'm actually an NZLC of the company and I love using these. His um, stuff is just super, super high quality, very, very high quality parts. They work and sound 
fabulously. Um, I'm go actually going to use this push pull pop, and uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to make the bridge humbucker um, coil splittable. Why? Just <laughs> so that I have the option of um, playing some single coil so sounds out of this guitar as well. Just make it a little bit more versatile. Um, the one thing I love about these is it's all solderless, so basically I'm just going to have to screw the uh, correct um, wires into the correct place. And uh, the kit actually comes with this tiny little screwdriver, which is awesome. <laughs> so that's going to take uh, very, very little time to, to actually wire up. So I'm going to get going with that. And this was really cool. The uh, guitar actually came with this knob, which has been aged. Uh, you might be able to see that. I'll give you a closer look a little bit later once it's installed. But it's been scratched up and properly, you know, relicked, which is fantastic. Now this is where it gets very, very cool. I literally just have to uh, put these into the correct terminals on here, and then just use the screwdriver to um, tighten up the, uh, the screws. And that's it, I am literally done. So I'm gonna do that right now. And that's it, it's done. I literally just have to wire the pickup into here now. And that's gonna be very, very easy because the hot wire is gonna go into this terminal. The uh, coil split wires are gonna go into this terminal. And the grounding wire is gonna go into this terminal. And that's it, I'll be done. <laughs> You're probably wondering why my soldering iron is here in the background. Um, I'll quickly show you. It's there. Well, I still need to run ground wire from the uh, claw at the back of the guitar into here. So that's the reason I have that, this here. Alrighty, I'm gonna just eyeball the alignment of the pickup. I'm gonna put the bridge in just temporarily just so that I can kind of make sure that the pole pieces are aligning roughly with the correct places. Yep, that looks about right. It just butted right up against there. So I'm just gonna quickly do a pilot hole here. I have a bit of a wobbly drill bit there <laughs> because it's, it's not in there properly. <laughs> it's going woo. <laughs> All right, maybe I should have checked that beforehand. <laughs> There you go. Alrighty, so that first hole is, is done and um, I'm gonna put um, one of the screws in. Nice thing about prior pickups and um, what Sean has sent me 
is that um, I've got the long screws here with the um, springs, but he's also sent these um, short, small screws. And that's a really, really super nice touch because I always look for these and I can never find the correct size. So the fact that he's done that is just super awesome. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for these little screws, which are uh, an additional thing that you sent. That's just fantastic, dude. Alrighty. I'm going to um, put this into the pickup and just uh, put this first side in. That's, that's nicely in there. And um, then I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm just going to drill a pilot hole. And then use another one of these short screws. That's it. That's perfectly bolted down. Beautiful. Alrighty. So wiring this up is going to be super, super simple with this switch. And um, I'll adjust my camera and zoom in so that you can see how quickly I can do this now. And this is the great thing about the Mad Hatter stuff. <laughs> so uh, here's my hot wire, the black wire. And that's going to go into um, this one here. Basically, there are terminals on this side where I'm putting the wires in. There you go. Apologies for covering that while I was doing it. I had to hold the wire in. And then these two are actually the coil wires, so they go to ground when the, um, the pot is actually pulled upwards. They go into this second position. And then the grounding can go into either of these last two so I'm actually going to put it into this one because this goes to ground anyways and um, there's already ground wire in that first one and that's it that's literally it it's done <laughs> the pickup is actually wired into here how awesome is that <laughs> And it's very, very neat. No soldering required. The only thing I did was I just um, tinned the ends of the wires because I like to do that. It just makes sure that the uh, wires don't fray and stuff. That's the only soldering I've done so far. So that's ready to actually kind of bolt onto here. So I'm just going to temporarily do that and then put the uh, claw at the back. Uh, but seriously, this is starting to look like a guitar. <laughs> so excited. Alrighty, um, I love using these shallow shore claws instead of the Floyd claws, so um, I'm gonna basically just drill a couple of holes for that. It basically just goes exactly in the middle. You just um, eyeball it, measure it out, make sure that the gaps on each side are even. Then you just do the two holes on the side and um, you have these screws which actually just bolt the whole thing into place. It's a really, really simple and um, elegant solution. Um, I will show you a little trick uh, that I use to ground this as well, and I'll show you that in a second, but I'm just gonna quickly do the, um, the pilot holes first. There's actually a technique that I use in order to uh, get the ground wire from here um, into the, uh, the cavity and then the, the grounding, um, and I'll show you that in a second, but first thing I'll do is I'll get this onto the, uh, the body of the guitar. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, so I have my drill ready and I'm just going to drill uh, two holes 
in the correct places. That's it, all done. These are done and I felt them coming straight through to somewhere down here. But that's okay. <laughs> it's no big deal because it's a relic guitar anyway. <laughs> so that's totally cool with me. Alrighty, so I need to get a grounding wire from here into the cavity. And um, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually um, get a washer. So just a, a regular washer like this and basically um, just solder a piece of wire onto um, the end of that and then I'll put it under one of the screws which actually holds the, the shore claw in place. Now that's an easier way I find to do it because this is much stronger than just a piece of wire which is going to break under some pressure. Alrighty, got my grounding wire there. I'm just gonna feed it through to the cavity. There's a hole right down here. We're just gonna just take it through. There you go. Done. Now these are really easy to install. So all I'm gonna do is get one of the screws and um, pop it into there. And then this is where this little washer comes in useful. I basically just thread the washer onto it. And that's going to basically screw into there. Just place it correctly. Get it started. Get my second screw and I'll just get this started then I'll get my um, electric screwdriver and these will be in in just a second. And that's it, it's done, <laughs> literally that's it. <laughs> Brilliant. This is turning out in, to be a little bit of a Lego project, kind of. <laughs> Alrighty, final thing to do is to put this grounding wire um, onto the, one of the grounding lugs. Again, I'm just going to use the little screwdriver that I got with the um, Mad Hatter kit. Just undo one of those. Slip the wire in. Do it up tight, make sure that the other terminals are tightened as well. And that's it, that is all of the wiring done. And it took me such a short amount of time. And it's like I said, I love that about these kits. They just take minutes to do rather than you know soldering everything up and um, having to do all of that. Just absolutely fantastic. Pretty much it. The body's pretty much ready. Um, so I'll just very quickly put the knob on. It says tone on there. I've just realized <laughs> it's a tone knob. It is a tone knob. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> it works. This is going to be super, super cool. Alrighty, I think that's the body pretty much done. So I'm gonna go back to the neck and finish that off. Um, just oil it, it should be dry by now. I'm gonna um, oil it and then just, um, with some very, very fine wet dry paper, just uh, sand it down just a tiny bit, just to make it really, really super smooth. And once the oil has dried, this will be ready to put together.
The neck is looking awesome now. It is a little bit colored, not too much, which is just fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, last thing I'm going to do before putting the hardware on is use some boiled linseed oil um, on the neck. It'll protect it and it will also make it really, really smooth as well. So I wear gloves when I do this because this is sticky stuff. And that's it. I'm just going to let it sit for a while and um, just uh, buff it a little bit with another piece of um, uh, paper towel here and then it should be good to go. A little bit more on the headstock. It looks really great when it seeps in. Gives it a tiny bit of a sheen. Alrighty, there you go. The oiling is done now as well. Getting close to um, finishing. I'm gonna be using these tuners. Um, I've had them forever in the day. They're ESP tuners. Probably came with one of my GL256 guitars. Um, they were sitting in this little uh, box and um, the box had uh, tons of other stuff in it, so they're slightly scratched up and uh, look a little bit old. This one looks really old. I love the patina on this one. Uh, the other one's a little bit shinier, but they're scratched up, which is going to match the patina of the guitar perfectly. I'll do one of them first, just to line it, and then I'll kind of just measure up where the hole is, make sure everything is aligned properly. So usually what I do is once I put the tuner on, I put the bolt in and um, just align it the way I want up here so that it looks correct. And then I'll go to the back and um, just mark off the hole where it is. So that's the first pilot hole that I'm going to drill and then I can measure down from the, uh, the top of the headstock to where the hole is and then um, make a line right across here, make sure that everything is aligned properly. Here's another little tip. Um, you'll probably see that I have some masking tape on my drill bit here, if it focuses in. Um, that's to make sure that I don't drill all the way through. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Alrighty, here's another tip for you. Um, so whenever I bolt tuners on, I always start at this end and then work my way this way. That's because the little eyelet is on this side. And if I go the other way, what I find is there's a tuner in the way. <laughs> so that makes it a little bit trickier to screw it in. So I always start that way and then work my way the opposite way, so from the high E string to the low E string in this case. I 
had this little gold screw as well, so I figured I would put that in there. <laughs> Going along with the theory that, you know, Eddie used whatever parts he had lying around, so uh, that's what I'm going to do as well. But this time I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> Alrighty, that's done. I'm gonna flip it over and put the bolts on now. One final thing that I would like to do to the headstock. I think I need to sign it. <laughs> Yeah, that looks cool. Just a little detail there. Next up is the lock nut. I'm going to be top mounting it with screws going into the neck this way rather than um, the other way because my neck doesn't actually have um, holes on the other side. So um, I'm just going to leave it as it is and do it from the top. But again, I need to make sure that my drill is not going to go all the way through the neck and that looks pretty good actually. So I'm just going to leave the tape there and that should be deep enough. And I can check that by putting the, the screw into here, putting the drill bit next to it and the depth actually looks pretty much the same there, which is awesome. Alrighty, so to do this, what I'm going to do is place the, uh, the lock nut there um, on the neck and I'm going to put my fingers on each side to kind of just carefully align it dead center and what I'm looking out for is it should feel the same both ways if there's a little bit of lock nut sticking out this way then it needs to go this way if it's a little bit too much there then it needs to come into the middle so if I hold it around here and that's going to give me the perfect place to actually put my holes. Now when you're doing this, obviously make sure that the lock nut is butted up against the fretboard. Um, you don't want it to be a little bit back or anything like that, otherwise you could run into intonation problems. Alrighty, I've got my two holes marked there. Just going to drill into here carefully and then Put the lock nut onto the guitar. All right, one final check, and alignment's looking good on both sides. So that's awesome. Alrighty, I know I'm gonna need to shim this um, because it is a tiny bit low. Alrighty, the neck is now done. So this is ready to go onto the body now. So 
I'm going to get the body and start um, bolting this on and um, finish off the guitar. Yay! Another quick tip for you. So um, I've put some old strings on, but they're all loose down here. <laughs> the uh, neck's not on the body yet, but um, I'm going to fit the retainer bar, the string retainer bar. So what I usually do with this is I'll test fit strings anyways. Um, because I've got a lock nut and I can actually lock the strings and then tension them up which is going to show me exactly where I can put the screws. Now the reason I do this is to make sure that the screws don't actually hit the strings when the retainer bar is on. So now that it's on there I can actually see exactly where it needs to be and I, then I can place it in exactly the correct place. And I can get my drill and put a little pilot hole where it needs to be. And then do it to the other side as well. And this way I can ensure that the screw isn't going to be hitting the string when the bar is on. All right, time to put this together. Now this neck actually fits on really, really super tight onto the body. Perfect. That's a really, really super, super snug, snug fit. Beautiful. And like I said, I'm gonna use one black screw um, down here uh, simply because it needs to be slightly shorter and it literally is just about three or four millimeters shorter than the, um, uh, the chrome screw here which is exactly what I needed. They went in fantastically well. I'll just check the gaps. There's no gaps in the neck joint here, I can see. Wow! <laughs> check it out! <laughs> Yay! Alrighty, gonna put the bridge on. I'm getting excited about this now. All right, the guitar is put together and um, the light's fading today, so I'm not going to string it today. I will string it tomorrow. I'm so excited to play this. I'm curious about this pickup. Never tried it before. I'm sure it's going to sound absolutely amazing. The guitar looks absolutely fantastic. The alignment's looking really good. Um, just test fitted a couple of um, strings on it, just the high E string, low E string, just to check if um, everything was aligned and it looked good. So um, I'll string it up tomorrow and I'll be playing this soon. Yeah.
Alrighty, check this out. <laughs> so cool, it's done. I'm so pleased with it. Looks amazing. Uh, I've played it a little bit. It plays amazing too. Uh, I did a couple more things. Just did a little bit of a setup on it. Um, and I also added a little bit more aging onto the, the fretboard here. And you know what I use for this? Graphite pencil. <laughs> yeah, just put a little bit on there and then just rub it with my finger and basically aged it up beautifully. Now, when I did the wear pattern, I basically, I was, you know, concentrating on the frets I would usually play. So I don't play these frets um, on the low strings as much as the high strings. So um, it kind of goes in a bit of an arc down here so that these frets in the middle and they're, you know, quite dark all over. These frets a little bit on both sides. These frets definitely a little bit more on the um, low side. Anyways, everything's working really good. This uh, Tone Vice uh, detuner is excellent. Literally just spin it and um, spin it back and it just does such a great job, you know really easy to use and it's very discreet as well and that's what I like about it literally just that and then when you want it back the other way you just basically kind of slip it down like that yay got my 1973 coin there year of my birth the shallow Floyd is awesome love it this pickup is just ridiculously cool this uh, pariah pickups Pasadena black they actually have a series of these. Uh, they have like three different um, Pasadena series pickups. Uh, the original PATH spec, which is a little bit um, less um, output than this one. This one's the black, which is about 14K output, 12K output, something like that. Um, and it sounds just amazing. This is one of my favorite pickups. Um, I haven't played a pickup like this ever. This is such a dynamic, beautiful pickup. Love the tone. Uh, moved the uh, the volume pot from here to the hole up there. I don't put it in there by mistake. Makes much more sense here. And the nice thing is, the pickup is very, very sensitive to the volume. It has that EVH thing going on where when you wind it down, you know, if you're on 10 and you wind it down a little bit, you get much, much cleaner tone. Um, even when I was plugged into my um, my high gain um, Red Stuff Odin amp, you know, I was on the highest gain channel with the gain up there. And when I rolled this down, it did such a beautiful job. Really, really cool. The neck is awesome. Love the profiling. Um, it was definitely a good move for me to uh, take this down to 20.5 mil. At the back, oh by the way, I got this very schnazzy strap for it. <laughs> this is actually a strap for a bag, <laughs> but because it has the, uh, the clips there, it works perfectly for this. Anyways, um, the short claw works beautifully. This was a good move on my part from my personal guitar because it gives me access to the high frets without that getting in the way. And the rest looks super awesome. Frankie is done. I think I should plug this in. I'm gonna plug this into my purple number 39 head. Turn everything to 10. And let's play some Van Halen. Yeah! Frankie! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Turning up the volume and just jamming out, just with Frankie, is such a great guitar. Love it. But um, time to take this into the studio, plug it into my Plexi, and give you some sounds. This is pretty special because I am actually playing a guitar that I built through an amp that I built and into impulse responses from my cab down there. Yeah, which I created myself, and which are available if you want to check them out as well. Um, I'll leave a link somewhere up here in the description box or somewhere. Anyways, let's get this in the studio. <laughs> Trust me, this sounds sick. <laughs>
So there you go, guys and girls. This is such a phenomenal guitar. Love it, love it, love it. You're gonna see it in lots of videos, I'm sure, because I love picking it up and it sounds so cool, plays beautifully. And um, I'll be bringing you some more builds really, really soon. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon. Bye.